Okay, so here's another Friday function video. And in this Friday function video, we're going to talk about using functions that refer to connections made through the web, such as using Google Maps. So what I'm going to show you how to do is to use an image control to show a map based on data that you have in an address, for instance. So the first thing you're going to need when you do this particular function is you're going to need to go get a key from Google Maps APIs. So very often when um, you are dealing with APIs, you need to have your own key. So I'm going to ask you to get your own key versus using mine. And you just go to the developers.google.com slash maps and then documentation get API key. So basically you can do a search for this on Google as well. Get API key for Google Maps is the search you would type. Then when you get to this page, you'll click on get a key. When you click on get a key, it wants you to kind of type the name of your project or create a new project. And you can name it whatever whatever you want to name it. And then after you um, type the name of your project, just click Create Enable API. And then what it will do is it will give you an API that you can use. So this doesn't cost anything at all. It's completely free. Um, but you will use this API in your applications. Now, if you want to know the limits of usage for this API, here it is. All I have to do to copy it is click this little button right here and it copies it to my clipboard. Um, if you want to know limitations, and again, you go to the documentation here and you'll get the limitations on using this API key. Once you have the API key, then you are ready to start your Power App. And there are basically two different functions we're going to use. We're going to use a concatenate function um, in our um, image definition. So in the property for image, we're going to use this function. And just to break this down, concatenate means to combine, to put together. And I tend to pronounce it wrong, so my apologies. It's concatenate. And I always say it wrong. So somebody who says it right, put some help down in the description below. Um, and what we want to put together is first, this URL, which never ever changes here, is the URL that connects to your API so that you can get a map, right? This question mark begins your query string, right? And so I've set the zoom at 15. And so that's the first part of our expression. Then I've set the size through this expression, the map type, which is a road map, the markers, which we're going to be red, and they're going to be a little location marker. And then I'm going to have an address field in my app that I can go get the address from. But wherever that address has a space, I need to replace it with a plus sign. And that's why I'm using the substitute function. So you're kind of getting um, three and one with this uh, video, three different functions, concatenate, which means to put together, substitute, which means take this thing, look for the second thing, which in this case is a space, and replace it with the third thing, which is a plus sign. And this is all just because we're using Google Maps, and it's these are the things that they require that we tell them. And then all my addresses are in Washington, so I didn't bother to dri drive that through data. But you most definitely could have done a selected dot state if you have different states in your data. And then my key number on the bottom. Please don't use my key. Please make your own key and use that. Then I'm going to, in the launch function, darn it. sorry about my battery going, going down. In the launch function, this is for clicking on the map. After we show them the map in an app, we're actually going to use this launch function to open up the map in Google Maps so that they can get directions. And this is really cool when you're working in mobile apps because you can actually get the directions and it'll go to your car and, you know, everything's just smooth and simple. All right. And this one starts out with a slightly different URL. It's mapsack slash place which is what we always get when we are looking for um, an address. You start out with that prefix. 
And then we take the same substitute for the address and the city and the state, okay? So, of course, my data has to have address, city. I don't have to have state because all of mine are the same. So let's look at, look at my data real quick. So I'm going to go back to the browser into my site, and you'll notice that I have an, uh, a data called building addresses, and then I have a couple of buildings, and I have the address, the city, and the state. So all I'm going to do is create a new app, just running an app from, from, from the ribbon. I'm just going to type uh, my buildings. Let's just call this app my buildings. And then I'm going to click create. And I'm going to wait for Power Apps to do its magic. As I always say, I'm very grateful for the way that Power Apps, you know, kind of does my work for me. I don't have to think. I think I meant to type there and it didn't let me, so we'll see what happens. If I get an authentication error, I know why. It's because I went to type and it didn't let me. Oh, but I'm good. I can tell I'm in, I'm good. I swore my name in the browser in the right environment. I happen to have at least six different tenants, and so it's always hard to keep track of all my logins. Some of you probably can relate. So it's building my app, and since I chose create an app, it's building a three-screen app. So a browse screen, a detail screen, and a form, which you're already very used to. And once it's done that, I will just go ahead and add my map to the detail screen. And you'll see how easy that will be in just a minute. It's almost done. I can always tell it's almost done because I see the canvas behind it. That means it's almost done. And we are working hard to make this faster. But there is a lot going on behind the scenes here. So each there's three screens being built. There's a lot of functions being thrown into those screens. Um, so there's actually a lot of work going on in the back end there. All right, so I'm just going to put the building name in this view so we can see it. So as you know, we can select the gallery now, and we can click on the data to change the fields or the layout. Um, so I'm going to actually... In the title area, I'm going to put the uh, title field, which is the name of the building. In the city area, I'm going to leave that city. And then um, let's just put state there. So now we have all of that working. Now, I said I was going to put my map on the details screen. So I'm going to go to the next screen and then put myself in edit mode. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to zoom all the way out so we can see it up close, you know, so we can see how it's laid out. And I'm going to change the layout on this so that it's snapping to two columns. So I'm going to snap to two columns. That'll take up less space vertically. And then I will um, use only half the screen so I can put my map above it. Okay, so now basically we have space for our map. So to get my map, I'm going to add an image control. So I'm going to go to the insert menu and choose media and image. And that's going to drop down an image control. I'm just going to line that up. And I will set the image position to fill. And then I might zoom out just to see, you know, how is this laid out? Looks good to me. All right. So now here's where we do our magic. We go to the image control and we use that first formula that I talked about. With your key, not mine, please. And then I'm going to paste that in here. And I have to check to make sure, there's a couple of things. When you copy and paste 
into your computer, you want to make sure that your quotes are always straight quotes. Sometimes when you copy from other places, you'll get curly quotes. You don't want curly quotes. You also want to make sure that you have spaces in here and not little boxes that might have got translated from some other app, right? Um, so just make sure you have your format is correct. And that means making sure that you have straight, straight quotes and you have real spaces. See that quote right there? You can tell it's a curly quote. And so it's underscored in red. And so I'm going to remove it and put a straight quote. All right. So you always want straight quotes. Now, if you notice, sorry, if you notice, my map is already showing. So after I made those few changes, let's see one more here. After I made those few changes, the map just appeared. Okay, so let's look at that. There is the map for that location. So if we go back to the first screen and we hit the play button, if I click building 44, then I get the address for building 44. If I go back and I choose Advanta C, now I'm in Bellevue with a marker for Advanta C. Now, the last thing we want to do is make this clickable so that they can go to Google Maps and get help. So I'm going to go ahead and put myself back in edit mode. I'm going to highlight the map itself and change to the on select property. And there's where I'm going to put the other function that is the launch function. I'm going to copy and paste that into my on select. And now what should happen is when I click on this, it will open up Google Maps and take me to that location. But let me point out a few things that you might um, run into with these functions that I'm using. So first of all, I ran an app from data. So I ran my app from SharePoint as an app and not as a form. And that's why my gallery is named Browse Gallery 1. That's kind of really important because if we go to screen number two and we look closely at my function there, you'll notice that's referring to the address in Browse Gallery 1. So if your gallery is not called Browse Gallery 1, then guess what? This function will not work. You need to replace ga Browse Gallery 1 with what your gallery is called. Because what we're saying to Power Apps here is give me the address in the thing that was selected in Browse Gallery 1. So if nobody selects something in Browse Gallery 1, or there is no Browse Gallery 1, you're going to get an error message. So you need to look at the gallery that you're using for selecting um, the address that you want, and then put the name of that gallery in there. So just understand that you're automatically going to be called Browse Gallery 1 if you create an app from a SharePoint list. Not a form, but an app from a SharePoint list. You will automatically get Browse Gallery 1, so this will not be a problem. But if, you, if your gallery is called something else, remember to change your formula to use what, you, what, what your address is. And please remember also to use your own um, key, not my key, use your own key, um, and you go get that key where I told you early at the beginning of this video. And that's how easy it is to put a map in your apps. So I really hope you'll enjoy doing that, and I look forward to future Friday functions. Happy power apping.